Hello. In this video, we're going to go over some timing functions in Do More Designer and show you how they work and how they're fairly easy to use. I think you're going to um, really like using the timing functions. Makes the PLC program programming seem um, worthwhile because of the functionality of timers and counters. Now, first of all, we'll just discuss timers in this video. So I've opened up a new program here, and I'm just going to add an input into our first rung. I'll just make that a normally open, and I'm just going to call that start. I'm going to use it to start the timer, and I'm going to make it with, associated with um, an input on the simulator, and those are our x's. So this will be x0. Right now, I'm going to go over here, and this is where our timing functions are. And you'll notice I'm in core, and that just eliminates a lot of the unnecessary clutter of all of the instructions that we could possibly have. And we'll just go to our more common ones here. And if we go to the very bottom, we'll see that we've got timers, counters, drum. We'll be using timers and counters. And you'll notice that there's there's a few timers listed here. The easiest thing to do is just to go to the timer function. And you notice it's got hotkeys, control three. So let's do that, control three. And it opens up a dialog box here, which we need anyway, because we have to tell the timer what its function is going to be. So it says here, timers start here if you're not sure. In most cases, we're gonna be either using an on delay timer or an off delay timer. And each one of these, it says, has an output bit which is good because that's what we want to do. We want to make our timer do something and have an output that it's going to associate. And we'll get into that and what that looks like. So let's select the on delay timer here. And I'm going to give it a nickname because it's just easier that way, especially if you have multiple timers in a program. We'll call it timer one, just something easy. Then we start going into our seconds here. And to make things simple, I'm just going to put five second delay in there. And we'll hit the green check mark. It's associated with, again, a software point, TO. Don't need to change that. And now we've got our on delay timer here that's going to be five seconds. So now what I'll do is I'll go into rung two and I'll put another normally open contact in there. F3, or sorry, F2. And I'm going to call that, well, I don't have to call it, it's already named because it's going to be associated with this. So if I start typing in timer one and I hit dot, then I have a, a bunch of different functionality that is going to be associated with that. Now, DN and done are the exact same thing. What DN is just Alan Bradley speak. Um, so that's just what they've incorporated into this. The EN is when the timer is enabled. So when this rung goes true, and I've only got one, one instruction ahead of it. So when this goes true, this timer is going to be enabled. And this bit down here will go true. And if I have something associated here, then that would also um, be operated. Okay, so as long as this is true, this timer is enabled. So there may be a reason to use that um, if that's what you want to do but that's that's what that would do the other one that's interesting is the timer timing or TT which is again the same thing here um, when we select that when this run goes true this bit down here will also go true for the five seconds that it starts timing but then after that it'll go off it'll go back to a zero state so it'll time it'll be a one or active only for that five seconds. Now here, what we're going to use is the done bit. It's just as easier. I'm going to go with that one here. And what that'll do is when this goes true here, this will start timing. And then at the end of that timing cycle, this will go true and activate whatever I have over here. So now I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to put an output here. And I'm going to call that lamp one. I've got capital A, lamp one, and then it's going to obviously want me to associate that with something, and I'm just going to call that 
uh, y0 for my simulator. And now I have a basic timing function. So I'll hit the start button and then five seconds later, this lamp should come on. So let's get the simulator started here. First of all, I'm just going to close that out. I'm going to accept my rung edits. It's gone green here, so I'm saying everything's good. I'm going to move this over to just make that a little bit smaller and then put the simulator in. Drag that over here. I'm going to turn this on. And so everything looks pretty good to go here. So I'll hit X0. And then five seconds later, you should see Y0 come on. And then we'll know that it's functioning properly. See the timer happening here. And there we go. So it'll stay on until I make this rung go false. And I'm going to do that now. And what it does, as soon as this rung goes false, it resets the timer back to zero seconds in the accumulator. And that is it. So that's the functionality of that. Okay, so I'm going to close the simulator. And I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so we can work on this. And I will start working on these timers. Now I'm just going to cut this timer out, leave that lamp there, probably cut this. And now I'm just going to Again, put another timer in here, control three. And I'm gonna make this an off delay timer. And I'm gonna call this timer two, just because I, I want something to just be a little bit different here. I'll do it again for the five seconds. In there. Associated with the other one was T0, so now I've got a different one on T1. I'll put an instruction in here. Two. And I will associate that with timer two. And I'll select the done bit. Okay. So this program is going to look a bit different than our last one. This is an off delay timer. So what's going to end up happening is when this run goes true, this will um, not be active until uh, this timer goes off. And then it will be active. But it doesn't start timing which is a little bit different. So when I did the last experiment here, this, when I activated this, it started timing right away. This isn't going to start timing until I actually remove this until this run goes false. And then when this run goes false, then you'll see the timing and it'll start timing down instead of timing up. And then as soon as the time goes out, then this will go active and my light will come on. So it's going to it's going to act about the same. It's just that this rung actually has to go false instead of true. So let's just take a look at that. And I'll run my simulator. Accept my rung edits. First of all, I'll slide this over the simulator and then we'll move that over. Okay. Now once I go into run, you're going to see that this actually comes on right away here but it will go off as soon as I actually activate this. So it the program thinks that everything is, is done because there's no time here left. But as soon as I hit this X0 here, you'll see that it goes out. So now the program is actually running like it's supposed to. Um, and now when I turn this circuit, not the circuit off, but the instruction off here, this is when you're going to see this accumulator start to go down. Okay, so the accumulator is already at five seconds. I'm going to hit X0, and it's actually starting to time down, and then it's going to hit its done bit, and then the lamp comes on. So it's a little bit different. So there's there's the on delay and the off delay. 
and you can take advantage of using both of them. They both have their own unique set of circumstances that you would use an off delay timer and off on delay timer. Um, sometimes you need one motor to run for a, a period longer than one motor when you shut one motor off. One motor might be a feed motor and the other might be a conveyor. So once you stop feeding onto the conveyor, you need the conveyor to run for another 20 seconds to get the product off of it before you would want to restart it. So there's there's different scenarios where you would use uh, different timing functions. So that's uh, just a little bit that I wanted to show you there with the on delay and off delay timers. Hope that helps and we'll see you in the next video.